Welcome to Never Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and today we have an Amazon product review. My wife and I are approached by lots of companies out there, and we're very, very happy to be recognized. And different companies want us to check out their products, and we cannot say yes to everything. Uh, we did say yes to a couple products, and one we're going to review today. When we do say yes, we know that one, we want to be associated with it. And two, there's got to be something interesting that sets it apart. And I believe the knife that we're going to do today does set itself apart for two reasons. The two reasons that I saw were sharpening angle on the blades and the type of steel that it's been used. I've never used the type of steel and I am um, definitely read about some knives sharpened at these angles, but we're going to see it together. So Vosteed. Uh, they have sent us this product. You can see it's still in the box. I have not seen it other than the internet. It's still sealed up. Yep. Okay. We are ready to go. So, um, this company has done for the last year some, some everyday carry. They're breaking into the culinary world. They reached out. If you're familiar with the products that I have, that's very pretty much 100% Japanese. I do have some German knives. Um, this is a very futuristic looking from the design on the box. So the um, it says it's an eight inch chef knife and they're launching on the 15th. The day's the 13th. You can still pre-order. So, so we actually have one before the rest of the world has one. I know my friend Frankie is supposed to be getting one in the mail as well. All right, so let's take a look at how this thing comes. Okay, so Vosteed, we've got a nice edge protector. So once we take it out and we're ready to use, I guess if you need the keychain, it's kind of a nice little extra touch. Um, this knife, I will say that currently its launch price, I believe, is $59 and like 98 cents. They have made several products. One is their Santoku, which looks like a bunka. It actually looks like a pretty cool bunka. It's actually $79 and it's seven inches. So, um, so let's go ahead and keep going here. Okay, so the handle is this G10 material. It is actually very lightweight. I'm going to let my, uh, my wife put her hand underneath in a second. The balance point is supposed to be right underneath. Seems it's still a, li still a little heavy on the handle end. Okay, so not. So I'm going to let my wife just hold that for a second and see that it's pretty lightweight. It's very lightweight. Yeah, it's lightweight. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details. We have that that laminated look. It's supposed to be three layers of the same material. So whether it's faux laminated, sandblasted, um, there's no way for me to to tell. I would say it's very thin in the spine. Um, I think you could actually kind of compare that to the Kobayashi. Um, something that we have is very thin. Sorry, I'm having a hard time focusing because it is so thin. He wants to focus on the cutting board instead. Okay. Yeah, so um, very interesting. It... Unlike the Japanese handles that are either oval or kind of D-shaped, um, and then the Western handle, this is a very modern kind of a look. I do like the taper going down right here for the pinch grip. It doesn't abruptly end, so it does give me a little bit of comfort for the pinch grip. We'll go ahead and do the choil shot, too, since my wife's there. Um, I can't quite tell if it's rounded I was trying to feel like, is it going to cut into my finger? I don't feel like it would. The back of the spine, though, uh, square edges. My wife is probably saying, like, you're moving too fast. You're moving too <laughs> you're fast. Moving so, much. Yes. so there are some square edges yep. up on here. Yep. 
but it's tall enough for your normal pinch. Okay, this is about 200 millimeters. So, um, if so, they they did it in imper is it imper imperial? Is that what we say when we're using inches? I'm so used to American that we say inches, but in the knife world, we're, everything is centimeters. So, and millimeters. Yeah, so uh, this is 203 millimeters for those knife nerds who are out there. But in America, we say it's an 8-inch chef knife. Okay, so let's see what else might have come in here. So we've got just some paperwork about uh, just the original sketch from the designer. The designer himself, you, uh, is actually a celebrated and a, a person and a foodie. He's been in Gizmodo magazine. Um so sketching up something, wanting to do something a little different. Let me show you some other design features that I'm sure we cannot, we will not be able to see. So I'm going to just have my wife pan back for me to tell you this. So I don't have the info on which side, but this is a 70-30 grind. Now for my wife who's hearing this for the first time, she knows that most double bevel knives are 50-50. The bevel comes in equal angles on both sides. This knife is going to be not straight up and down and like this, but it's like a, a little bit on one side, a lot more on the other. So instead of a 50-50 even, one is a little bit more 70-30. So what that's going to do, and so the, the, thing, the problem I don't know is, I don't know if the 30 is on the inside the 70 is on the outside. If I had to assume, I think that I would assume for single bevel knives, you tend to be flatter on the inside of a right-handed knife. I am right-handed. Your average person buying would be right-handed. Sorry, left-handers. So if you were going to make a knife, um, I would probably put the 30 on the inside. And let me explain how that actually might change some cutting. So when you have food and you have a blade going into food, let's say a steak, as the blade's going down, you're going to have pressure on the food on both sides. And as it's cutting, you're, you're putting pressure below it onto the food. If you had one side that was straight up, there'd be no pressure. The pressure would be on the opposite angle. So they decided to play with that. They decided to have just a little bit of pressure on one side and, and more on the other. And this is, we tend to see this more in, in our single bevel knives, which are very Asian, mostly Japanese. So the Masamoto Corporation does something like this as well. So it's definitely following the design of another established company. Um, so right now we have a super lightweight knife using a steel, which is 9CR18 MOV. So that's some fancy name for steel that you've never heard of. For the knife nerds out there, they're all looking it up. So the 90CR 18 MOV, it sounds like some things we've heard of on this show. This is the Chinese version of the 440B steel. Okay, so this is going to have a little bit more vanadium, chromium. They use nitrogen. Um, they have a little bit more carbon in there. But one of the things that's, that all of that kind of lends itself to is they can get this knife a little harder, which is great. We see the heat treatment on this knife at 58 to 60. For those of you who don't know knives, let's explain that if you're using German knives, Wusthof, Hinkle, Victorinox, you're going to see 58, 59, even below. That means the knife's going to have a lot of flex, Okay. When a knife has a lot of flex, it's very durable, but the steel is soft enough to get dull fast. The harder the knife, the sharper you can get the edge, um, but the more brittle the knife. This really does launch right in the heat treatment of leaving German and going towards Japan, which means it's gonna be a little harder. It should be able to get a little sharper than our Wusthof and Hegel. Um, so that kind of makes me happy. That was one of the things that jumped out is, okay, they went a little bit harder on the heat treat, having the vanadium, having some of the chromium, the things in there to make it a little harder is going to be great for edge retention, anti-corrosion. Okay. Being that it's a little softer, so it's where I'm going to be able to sharpen it with all the various whetstones out there. So I'm not getting anything in particular. So an inexpensive whetstone, I'd be able to do it. 
If you were wanting to recreate the sharpening angles, you'll definitely have to check out some videos that we've done because you'd have to know how to sharpen this knife to keep the 70-30 angle. Um, but the goal of this company is to provide you a great knife that if you'll take care of it properly, not use it on frozen food, not use it on bone, use it the way you're supposed to, it should last you for like a very long time. $59 and change launch price, that's a great price. Um, but now let's see if it's going to hold up to its performance. So as always, we have a couple of things ready. When we do any type of unboxing of knives, we like to see the out of the, out of the box sharpness. Um, some people don't put a lot on this, but if you've got a great knife by a great blacksmith, chances are you're a collector and you know how to put an edge on your own knife. If you're buying this knife for your kitchen, you want it to come sharp. So let's go ahead and see you know, how sharp this knife came out of the box. We're ready to go. So we got a sub 200, a 179. And as always, we're going to just do it again. We want to make sure we get not just one flukish score. So if you are new to the channel, if you're new to knives, this machine, BESS Certified Best Tester, is a machine that has a specific monofilament, a certain thickness. Um, think of this as a scale. And it's going to measure the amount of pressure it takes for this knife to cut this monofilament. I will literally sit the knife down on this fulcrum. The knife will sit on... Whoa. And so we're getting sub 200 scores. Um, by I literally, and just to prove a point, <laughs> just one more. I am sitting the knife. I'm not pressing. I think your average person actually has a little pressure on there. I'm letting the knife rest. Gravity is pulling the knife onto the monofilament. So the knife is sitting. still sub 200 and I think right then you might have even saw that the nose rode up in my hand honestly it's, I probably had a better score than that and when I let it sit the nose came up before it fell through mm -hmm. so by any means necessary you have to know if you've been on this show sub 200 honestly 218 is an amazing score we've seen that be super sharp below 200 is incredible if 271 was the official, it'd be ridiculous. And Lord, if it was 233, oh, I mean 171. But if it was down in the 130s, whoo, so I am impressed. I will say I'm impressed by, by the sharpness of the knife out of the box. Let's go ahead and keep some of these things here. And just so you know what an edge protector looks like that they gave you, the edge protector, when you go to store this knife, you would put this in here. I don't want to dull the knife. Yeah, actually have to be paper. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's how you would put it in your drawer to protect the edge. And then you're going to slide it out from the top. There you go. All right. Yep. Okay. Not that you didn't know that. All right. All right. Let's 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 hear some paper. And uh, what do we mean by that phrase when we say hear paper? The sharper the knife, the quieter the cut so we find a good piece of paper good. and you're seeing me with my fingers so that's pushing that's not slicing pushing is very hard Um, how about my wife, if she has a moment to grab a paper towel? I mean, what the heck? We're doing all of this. Is it is it paper towel sharp? I don't know. So we'll find out. Um, 
maybe, maybe not quite paper towel sharp. We got a little cut, but I couldn't yeah. get. I mean, it, it, it did. No, I'm just saying non knife nerds, like for the rest of the people in the world who are looking at it. Oh, so paper towel is is clothy, and we're looking at it for it to just slice, um, not tear. So there was some slicing, then you can see some tear at the edge. So we're not quite paper towel, not that you need to be. My uh, my daughter dog over here, my fur baby, is visiting. Okay, so some dinner later on tonight. Uh, if you don't know, these are difficult to cut. I have literally a Japanese knife that's nice. That is, um, it is chipped. I'm afraid that that's too thin. <laughs> so my wife is a little bit concerned. I don't think I would do it. Okay, we're going to just try. I will say that um, we're also looking at the size of the spaghetti squash in comparison to the knife. Really? Okay, there's a knot on the end, and that's how you stem. chip your yeah, yeah the stem. Mm -hmm. So we have chipped other knives, and that that's a testament to the um, the more the durability, the the heat, the heat treat. It's a little bit more flexible. Yeah, held up pretty well. I'm surprised. I mean, I have to say, I'm surprised. Well, we like it when the wife is surprised a little bit. Still cuts paper. Yep, still cuts paper. Okay. What is that? It's a double paper in my food. No confetti. I don't think I need to do the onion, folks. Um, so what do I think about this knife? I think that if you want something that's going to be a little bit more durable, <clears throat> if you've got the $59, let me think about what's comparable out there. So Meeson, I like Meeson. They make a knife. It's a great knife. Uh, they actually use the, um, it's hard to remember all these numbers. I just said it earlier. They use the 50, what was it? It was the 50 CRV, like 15 MOV. They use that other steel that I was talking about earlier. And it actually does not hold its edge as long as this. It's, it's actually $69. This knife is probably going to go up, I would say, if you can get the deal for the 59. It is an 8-inch knife. Um, I like knives a little bit bigger. I think this knife is a great size for men, women, and children. Um, my wife definitely does not like a, a knife anywhere near this bigger, like bigger. Um, I think this is definitely the rock bottom for her, the 200 millimeter. Uh, it's a very modern look, so depending on your lifestyle, it does, it does have a look. But honestly, great steel. I, I, I mean, I'm going to say I'm a little jaded as far as like the, I don't know if it's layered cladded. I don't know if it's like a faux kind of a look to, um, to have the, the line that shows the cord steel. Um, but all in all, lightweight, goes through, does everything you wanted to do for the $59 and impressive numbers that's all i gotta say uh, thank you to Vo steed for trusting in us i'm actually going to have to do a an entire video on sharpening a knife 70 30 for all of those you who are out there purchasing this there'll obviously be a link in the description to the product um, to the company that reached out and trusted us and they were patient with us i i am going to say that i am impressed with the knife we have had other knives not come in and do what this knife did I think the, the, the thing that will tell the tale is how long will it stay that sharp? And there's no way for us to know that for a while unless we just use it in the kitchen. I'll definitely add it to the uh, family collection to let all of us use and maybe give you an update in the future on social media. Thank you so much for checking in. Hopefully this was not a dull moment. According to the spaghetti squash. Well, listen, we've had some difficulty with spaghetti squash. So I'm impressed by the spaghetti squash. I'm really impressed with the score out of the box. Again, uh, $59, under $60. Do yourself a favor. It's a good knife. It's made of good stuff. Thank you guys for checking in. God bless.